LifeSpark system includes the LifeSpark controller, LifeSpark dock, and LifeSpark pump. The LifeSpark pump is a magnetically levitated centrifugal pump with a single point ruby pivot bearing to provide stability for the on patient design. The 12 foot drive line connects to the controller to power the pump and adjust pump settings. Blood is pulled from the patient into the pump inlet or blue tubing and is delivered from the pump to the patient through the pump outlet or red tubing. The lower housing window can be used for pump inspection. The LifeSpark pump is preload dependent and afterload influenced. These factors can impact pump flows. The weight of both the controller and dock is 18.3 pounds. The controller alone is approximately 6 pounds. The LifeSpark controller can be removed from the dock by pushing down on a lever located on the side of the docking station and lifting the controller handle up simultaneously. The LifeSpark controller may be positioned on a tabletop while in the docking station or mounted on an IV pole with the provided IV pole clamp. The LifeSpark controller should always be connected to AC power, unless in transit, to ensure full charge of the four lithium-ion batteries. Two batteries are housed in the LifeSpark controller, and two in the dock. When fully charged, the batteries will provide a minimum of 30 minutes of power each at maximum speed, totaling two hours of battery life once disconnected from AC power. If necessary, batteries can be swapped from the dock to the controller, one at a time. The LifeSpark operator control panel consists of push-button controls, a main display, and a secondary display. Push-button controls include the controller power button, pump start-stop, up-down arrows to increase or decrease pump speed, menu button used to navigate through the four menu screens. A gear button currently used internally by Levanova will not have any effect on your controller. And silence alarm button used to acknowledge and mute alarms. The bottom of the control panel includes receptacles for the LifeSpark pump and LifeSpark flow sensor. Before powering on the device, batteries must be installed in the controller. If there are no batteries installed, the unit will alarm and display a non-critical self-test failure message. To reset, power off the controller and install the batteries. To power on the LifeSpark controller, verify that the power cord is connected to AC power and press the controller power button. There should be no other connections made to the controller or buttons pushed during the controller startup. When all power on self-tests are completed successfully, the controller will automatically proceed to the lock screen. If the controller is powered on without AC power, it will operate under battery power. The now on battery power alarm will be displayed upon completion of power on self-tests. The main display screen contains the pump status, flow rate, estimated or measured, pump speed, RPM, screen name, remaining time on each of the two batteries located in the controller, and if the unit is connected to AC power or not. To connect the LifeSpark pump to the controller, Fully insert the pump drive line into the pump receptacle, aligning the red lines until it locks in place. Start the pump by pressing the pump start stop button. Note that in the lock screen, which is indicated by the padlock symbol next to the pump speed and the label of lock screen, the pump can be started, but pump settings cannot be manipulated. The default speed at controller startup is 3500. The total speed range for the LifeSpark system is 2,000 to 7,500. 
To stop the pump or adjust pump speed, press the menu button to navigate out of the lock screen. Adjustment of pump settings is possible in all screens, except the lock screen. Press the up or down arrow buttons to adjust pump speed in increments of 100 RPMs. The secondary display's blue lights correlate with the set pump speed while in use. An estimated flow will be displayed if the flow sensor is not connected to the circuit and controller. The flow sensor is non-sterile, non-disposable, and unidirectional. The flow sensor should be connected to the outflow, or red tubing, with the arrow pointing in the direction of the blood flow. Connect the flow sensor cable to the controller flow sensor receptacle next to the power cord receptacle. Once the flow sensor is connected to the outflow tubing and controller, the measured flow will replace the estimated flow on the main display. To stop the pump, hold down the pump start-stop button for three seconds. A countdown will be displayed until the pump is stopped. Once the pump is stopped, a high priority alarm indicating pump stopped will be triggered. When an alarm condition is detected, the main display will automatically change to the alarm status screen. Alarm conditions can be non-critical, displayed in yellow, or critical, displayed in red. A screen border is also displayed in the same color as the highest priority alarm. The alarm status screen will display up to five alarm messages simultaneously in order of priority. Alarms can be silenced for two minutes by pressing the alarm silence button. To restart the pump, press the pump start stop button. In addition to pump stopped, high priority alarms include the following. Low flow triggered at pump flow less than 1.5 LPM. Controller temp high. Battery critically low. Battery depleted. Battery 1 and 2 disconnected. Although unlikely, a system or critical failure of the controller software may occur during operation. This software does not control the pump operation and patient support will not be disrupted. The controller is designed to continue running the pump at the set pump speed. The main display screen may be blank or may freeze. The menu and silence button will be non-functional and a continuous tone alarm will sound. Replacing the controller will be necessary in order to re-establish full functionality. Do not turn off the controller or disconnect the pump before replacing the controller unless a determination has been made to discontinue support. The secondary display can be used to provide an indication of the pump speed. If necessary, pump speed can be adjusted on the controller in the failure condition until it is replaced. Additional alarm information and non-critical alarms can be found in the LifeSpark Operations Manual and LifeSpark Alarm Guide. The fourth and final screen is the System Information screen, which displays controller and pump information, such as serial number, temperature, measured versus estimate flow, current runtime, and pump current. Pump current is measured in amps and can be indicative of pump status. If the pump current exceeds 2.6 amps, a non-critical alarm will be triggered. This could be indicative of thrombus formation, pump failure, or excessive flow. Pressing the menu button again will navigate back to the lock screen. Staying in this screen during use can mitigate any accidental speed changes or pump stops. To turn your controller off, you must lift the plastic cover located at the top of the controller and hold down the power button. The controller should be powered off completely and stored plugged into AC power.